Joining me now is Cynthia Lesur Aquin of Lorion Mineral Exploration. Cynthia, welcome. How do you do, Stu? Thank you for having me on your show today. You are new to you know, being an, uh, an interviewee here on this program, and a number of people may not know you. Let's talk a little bit about Lorion Mineral Exploration. Uh, how did the company come together, and what are the projects and properties that you have under development right now? Stu, I've been involved with Lorian Mineral Exploration since 2003. Um, I beca that's when I became CEO and President. Mm -hmm. um, the Ishkade property, which is now our flagship property, I acquired in late 2007, 2008. I uh, had a number of other uh, projects in our portfolio and uh, recognizing um, the mortgage-backed security crisis we had in 2008, I knew that I had to uh, sell some of my projects and uh, you know bring the Ishkade uh, forward as my flagship property. It had uh, lots of uh, very key factors that, that made it look like the, the flagship property. So we um, actually sold a couple of our projects. We garnered mm -hmm. about 6.3 uh, million um, since probably 2010. And um, we used that uh, money to put back into uh, the project. So uh, we have spent approximately $11 million on the Ishkade property, mm. um, have created or um, sort of acquired quite a substantial land base, not simply because uh, we were in acquisition mode uh, for property, but we followed uh, mineralized trends mm -hmm. and we now have about 47 square kilometers of the Ishkade property. We have a yeah. very substantial database of about 48,000 meters of drilling. Uh, we've completed uh, a lot of channel sampling. We have and, and grab sampling, a lot of programs in the field, a lot of prospecting. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've now collected roughly about 21,800 uh, samples. Um, mm. We've got a substantial database of, of, of eight geophysics uh, databases. Uh, the project hosts uh, two high-grade gold pass producers. And I think I should tell you a little bit more about uh, the mineralization and the location, because I think that's probably going to be very yes, key I to agree, this project. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, for a number of people say, hang on a second, I haven't heard, heard of you before. Where is this project? You're a substantial pro uh, project here. <laughs> Where are you located? <laughs> you know, Stu, that's a good question. So <laughs> yeah. we are uh, located in the Onaman uh, Greenstone Belt that is uh, 220 kilometers northeast of uh, Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, the Greenstone uh, Properties Brookbank to the south of us, uh, to the uh, east of us, we have a group of Argonaut properties, and Hard Rock is located in the, the Geraldton area that's um, owned by uh, Centurion Premier. Premier. Right. Um, so the Ishkade is located uh, 10 kilometers up the 801, uh, just off Highway 11 that uh, wow. col uh, collect, uh, connects Thunder Bay to uh, Timmins, Toronto. Um, so it's vitally important too to have that uh, transportation link. Absolutely, yeah. and I think this is very, uh, uh, very critical to point out that um, with the Ishkade property, its accessibility and what it really has to offer is pretty incredible. So we have um, the project is, has great accessibility to substantial outcrop uh, and exposure, and I think as you know today. There are very few projects that, that, that are remaining that have this outcrop exposure. So uh, I think it just kind of lay sort of dormant for so many years, um, you know, being highlighted uh, through the purchase uh, in 2008. But we're, we're uh, extremely grateful for having this uh, exposure, having this exposure to a very unique greenstone environment. Mm -hmm. It is a little different to um, other Archean greenstone environments. Um, I started off uh, sort of mentioning that we, we had two high-grade past gold producers on the property. Right. It's the Brenbaum mine and the historic Sturgeon mine. Uh, so both, both of them operated in the war, war years, uh, were sunk uh, probably um, 1936, and they operated to 1942, uh, produced at 17 grams uh, a, a ton. Mm -hmm. um, they produced in their time about 79,000 ounces of gold. 
19,000 uh, ounces of, of uh, silver. And, um, you know, at that time, uh, they, they probed, it was probably about $32 an ounce. So, yeah. you know, pretty, they were mining at pretty high grade. So yeah. their cutoff grade was around 10 grams. Yes. Everything went onto a surface stockpile, which uh, yeah, now is, has become a, a, a fairly substantial asset for us. So yes. there's about a, a 180,000 tons of a, a stockpile that, that grades around uh, 1.75 grams an ounce to, to uh, sorry, grams a ton to- As a stockpile? Uh, as a stockpile, yeah. So, wow. um, so that, that has a, that, that is a really great asset to us. I think it's important to note that uh, because, of, because the war years ensued, um, most of the, the operators were then in turn to the war effort yes. and the mine shut down and was never reopened. Mm -hmm. So basically now we have an asset that we know opens up at, at, at depth that was a, a, a very high grade asset wow. at the time and uh, remaining in the Stokes is about 80, 90,000 uh, uh, ounces um, of, of a pretty high grade. Um, then we have to to the the east of that we have a number of other substantial uh, zones mm -hmm. um, but uh, to the furthest to the east we have a zone called uh, the the a zone the a zone has about twenty six thousand meters of of, of uh, drilling completed in, in that um, and uh, that that a zone is a, a high a fairly high grade gold and base metal um, operation wow. so basically if i characterize the mineralization on the Ishkade, it would be um, sort of high grade gold stock works and then it would be centimeter to tens of meter wide uh, gold and base metal uh, uh, zones. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have sort of two slightly different different in, in environments. Um, both of them are, are really exciting to us so because the corridor in which these lie is is uh, about a one kilometer wide by five kilometers uh, long. Mm -hmm. um, last year we completed over forty thousand meter square meters of, of stripping, mm -hmm. and um, this was an, uh, this enabled us through channel sampling, um, geochemical sampling, um, and 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 the stripping to to really identify and and qualify or validate. Uh, that, that trend and its ex extension. Mm -hmm. So we commenced in 2018 what we call a, 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 a three-phase program in which we completed uh, the stripping um, and channel sampling, geochemical sampling um, and a lot of prospecting. Uh, we for uh, very targeted drilling. We're now in the summer 2020 about to commence uh, the first of our drill programs of a 100,000 meter uh, drill program. Um, I believe that this will become, uh, I, th I think we have sufficient work now and substantial uh, targets for our drilling that we will be very uh, able to rapidly expand our resources on, on the Ishkade. So um, it, for us this is a brilliant time in terms of the market timing and I think many of us miss uh, cycles because we're not exactly prepared for this. I'd like to say that that Lorien, with its one project, is very well prepared for the cycle. Mm -hmm. um, we are very well prepared from um, our, our database and the work that we have completed. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for us, um, you know, being in a geopolitical friendly environment, having exceptional relationship with our, our First Nations or our mm -hmm. Aboriginal groups yeah. um, is, is very important to us. Um, having the accessibility that, that we have to services and, and the main road, um, we, we have just a, a, a perfect situation um, to, to expand. So I think the last yeah. the thing that people always ask is, what, what about your access to money? Um, Lorien is very well funded yeah. to commence our program this year and we have um, a great opportunity in a number of areas, a number of pipelines uh, that will assist us in our, our funding for our projects over the next couple of years. So I, I, I think that, as I say, for, for me this is the perfect storm for Lorien. What will it take you to uh, go to production? 
we're mid-stage. Yeah. I think that it will take us if, uh, uh, probably another three or four years mm -hmm. of uh, rapid drilling uh, for us to, to quantify what we have. And remember what I said to you, we have yeah. great surface exposure. Mm -hmm. The fact is that our exploration costs are now a lot much, uh, are a lot cheaper because of the accessibility, because of our, our access to, to, to services. Mm -hmm. So uh, we could potentially drill uh, probably $150 a meter, which is really cheap. So we're yeah. going to start with uh, sort of our fairly shallow drilling and then deeper drilling. So I'd say probably between three and five years. Three to five years. Yeah. And when we take a look at what's happening in the gold market right now, Yes. Um, the future looks possible. It does. I, th I think that <laughs> no one can really predict what this market will look like. It's, yes. it's, it's so different to any of the cycles that we've ever seen in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's, it's different in that money has changed hands. It's no longer in the hands of the larger banks. It's more in the high net worth uh, family offices. I think that accessibility um, requires you need to have uh, a network mm -hmm. that is exceptional. Right. So, uh, and, 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 and I, I have to say that I'm very fortunate to have a board member that has a network like water. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate that you might partner with a uh, with a major firm to develop this, or based on the no, way you're talking, no, I get the sense that no. you're planning on developing this yourself? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, this has been a very strategic uh, last two three years. Um, we have had steady support and investment from family and friends. We now hold 58.4% mm -hmm. of, of, of Lorian, um, which means obviously means that there's a, a relatively small uh, float out there that gives us great stability. I feel that, that this enables me to focus exactly on what I'm supposed to do and, and develop the project and take it to, to a stage where it probably is an asset um, that could be for a takeover. Do I think that it's immediately? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've got still uh, quite a bit of work uh, to do. Yeah. Um, and basically, I'd like to make sure that if that opportunity ever arrives, that it is at the optimum price for not only the, my shareholders and investors. So, that's so if you're talking to a potential investor right now, uh, what are you saying to them? Somebody who's other looking than, at you now, other, other than, than give me your money. Yeah, other so. than everything that I've ju that I've just told you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because they're going to still say, okay, what's the, what's the unique opportunity right at this moment? If I if I'm going to validate you? ten million gold equivalent ounces over the next three to five years. That's a good story. Okay. Yeah. I love simplicity. <laughs> I think most people do, and you're able to back it up with all the details as well. Well, I'm which able to back it up with, yeah. with the with <laughs> the basically what we spent, yeah. you know. And I, I, I think, unlike a lot of properties, who you want to, if you'd like to visit and you'd like to look at it yourself, you're most welcome to. Wow. Yeah, this and and when we do that, and and um, incidentally, every year, I think going forward, uh, being proactive and sensitive to our shareholders and investors, I like to host them on our our project so that they are able to have a look at exactly what we do and you know become very educated um, investors in the Ishkade. Oh, that's fabulous and I, I'm wishing you great success and I'm thank hoping you. that you'll come back next year and give us an update and uh, thank you, Stu. You know, lay out the, how the, the next two or three years uh, look moving forward into the mid-2020s. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you next time.